Hello and welcome to the fifth lecture, uh, Molecular Dynamics Force Fields EAM. Here we'll discuss some semi-empirical pair potentials. And uh, we are continuing our discussion on molecular dynamics theory. And previously we have uh, introduced the simplistic interatomic potentials that considers only interaction between two atoms. But here we will uh, make things a little bit more complicated and uh, we will dive into uh, the semi-empirical interatomic potentials that is EAM. As we have mentioned that the functional form is called uh, interatomic potentials or force fields uh, that describes the energeti uh, energetical state of a system and it can be expressed by a functional form. And the simplistic uh, functional form is pair potentials or uh, a popular example is Leonard Jones potentials uh, that actually uh, doesn't consider anything else but interaction between two atoms. And uh, in Leonard Jones potentials, it only considers the attraction and repulsion uh, of uh, the atoms when it comes to, let's say, atom I and atom J. <clears throat> and that's why it has only attraction and repulsion terms. And it only works well for noble gases. But uh, if we talk about a semi-empirical embedded atom uh, method, then uh, it actually considers not only interaction between two atoms, but it also considers uh, as if the atom is immersed uh, in a field of uh, electric charge. Uh, that's why it's called embedded, as if the atom is embedded uh, in electron charge. And uh, you can uh, think about the uh, electron uh, configuration model for metals uh, in your from your high school chemistry book, uh, where it describes that, that as if the atoms are immersed uh, uh, in an ocean of uh, electrons. That's why the whole system has a charge, uh, and this model is particularly uh, uh, well set for metals. But uh, uh, you can see that there are several uh, pros and cons in the system. It's, it's yet simplistic. It doesn't uh, consider uh, the, uh, all the interactions that is present in a system, but it considers a long range columbic interaction uh, because it's uh, thinking that as if uh, every atom is actually immersed in, a, uh, in an electron density field. So that's why uh, this kind of uh, pair potentials or interatomic potentials actually uh, works well for metals. So as we can uh, remember that uh, previously uh, in the pair potential, there was only one term, right? The uh, empirical term, but you can also calculate the electron density term. So that is why, uh, that is what is getting added to the pair potential. And when you consider this portion and add it to the experimental portion, of the pair potential, then you get the EAM uh, definition of potential. So you are not only considering the interaction between two atoms, but you are also thinking about that uh, the atoms are actually immersed in an electron gas field and it has an electron density rho. And that's why you are considering another term to fully define your system. So there is experimental and calculated terms uh, included in your definition. And that's why it's semi-empirical uh, atom model or method. So uh, now you have got introduced to a semi-empirical uh, interatomic potential. In the next lecture, we will see another uh, type of popular uh, interatomic potential that is tertiary potential. Thanks. <laughs>